Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show, and we are about to review Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. This is going to be a spoiler-free review. We're just going to give you our quick evaluation of what we thought of the movie. So who wants to go first? Overall, what do you think? Good, bad? This was the best one of the three. Of the most recent three, yeah. yeah this I is, agree. They should have started this series at this quality, of course, because... Um, mm -hmm. You know, they, Abrams seemed to really understand that the characters need to have legitimate relationships in this film because that's what it, it really felt like it, and there was a, it, the feelings in this film were legitimate. Um, I really felt like all the characters cared about each other. Um, however, there was some some significant movie making mistakes and storytelling mistakes mm -hmm. in this film. What do you think, Rob? I, I didn't really see too many mistakes at all. I love this from beginning to end, from the scrawl to the last frame. I was sh actually shocked at how satisfying and rewarding it was for me. Um, uh, you had to accept early on that this is going to be, this is an homage. It's very nostalgic. There's going to be lots of callbacks com coming full circle, lots of that going on. That's what Abram started with the first two of these sequels. It was enmeshed. The, there's new stuff, but lots of old stuff all mixed together. But he did that to the ultimate degree in this last movie. It all came together, extremely satisfying, special effects, CG, set pieces, off the hook. I mean, beautiful stuff, mm -hmm. cool ideas, um, interesting and fun throwbacks to, to earlier movies. I just thoroughly enjoyed this. Very, you know, surprised at yeah, how good. Yeah, I think it was a fun ride if you're a Star oh my Wars God. fan. Yep. Uh, I had this, my big problem was the problem with the whole concept of the trilogy of these last three movies, and that it was just way too derivative of the, the first three movies. Yep. Uh, it was just, you took all of the plot elements, you mixed them up, and then laid them out kind of at random. <laughs> Uh, and it was very predictable from that point of view. Yeah. The details were, maybe were not predictable, but you knew that it was going to be some version version of those details that we got. That the broad uh, arc was going to be similar. There was a couple of scenes that were like massive deja vu. Like this is just this is Return of the Jedi. We just you know right. again shuffled yeah. around. But given that, and I kind of knew that, as you said, going right. into this movie because the first two movies, like there was no choice. This was going to be a rehash of the arc from, from the original trilogy. But given that, this was, I think, the best iteration of that, manifestation of that possible. Uh, it, so I enjoyed it, but it was nostalgia. You just had to f just accept the fact that you're not gonna get anything new really here, um, and just enjoy sort of a, almost a retelling of the original trilogy. In our spoiler review, we're gonna go into complete details yeah. about the, you know, if, ands, and buts. We'll do a deep dive on but, the, all three movies. But know. the in the spoiler-free version, which you know we have to edit ourselves down to just commenting and big picture. I completely agree with what you said, Steve. I don't understand why Abrams and Disney decided to completely borrow the actual story from movies four, five, mm -hmm. and six. They didn't need to do that. This universe is gigantic, as we see in The Mandalorian. There's a million Star Wars stories to tell. Yes. There's a million untold Star Wars stories. You know, every time you see a new alien species, you know, you could just start asking where they come from, when did they first meet these, you know. You every could, character, every, every character. character. Like, so, like what's his face, um, like Poe, as an example. Yeah. We got a, a, you know, you get a little bit of a taste of his background in this mm -hmm. movie. I, I, that's a TV show. I, absolutely. You know? So the fact that they needed to regurgitate movies four, five, and six inside of these three movies, mm -hmm. you know, seven, eight, and nine, makes no sense. But you're right, they cast the die. Mm -hmm. Now how do you wrap it up? You have the first movie was basically A New Hope with, with CGI, in mm -hmm. my opinion. The second movie was a slapstick Star Wars comedy, in my opinion. And this third movie actually had teeth. Yeah. Um, but I think Abrams did better than he ever could have hoped to do with this film because it had feeling, it had a heart. I, I felt every twist and turn. You know, the things that I would have liked to have seen is it branch out away from, mm -hmm. from the first three? Yeah. But I think he probably realized, I might as well just finish this thing the way I right. started it. You have to finish it, yeah. And he I, finished it well. Yeah. I do think there were a couple little pacing issues. It would have been nice to have some more intimate moments in between the action. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was a little frenetic. The, the, oh, the, the first pace. 20 minutes was totally frenetic. We want to care about these characters. We want to know more about them and their relationships. Like at the end of the movie, you should think, I would love to see a solo movie about Poe, right? About right. any one of them. And even like, you know, the, um, the background characters, I thought they didn't develop as well. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, from Star Wars, you know, Boba Fett's a throwaway background character in Empire yeah. Strikes Back. 
But they did such a great job of giving him an aura of coolness. He became a thing all unto himself. Yeah. Yeah. An entire mythology developed around that one background throwaway character. Yeah. Um, so like in this movie, um, Kylo Ren's tooling around with his squad, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, his squad. The, the Knights and of Ren. The Knights of Ren. And that was a missed opportunity, I thought. You know, they were in the background. They kind of looked cool from afar, but like they didn't do anything with them that maybe you'd wonder, I want to know more about that guy. Yeah. Like, what is that weapon he's carrying? What is that? Well, you the know? point is it doesn't take you know, 20 minutes of screen time. No. You just need one character to very appropriately at the right time say one sentence to one other person, and, yeah. and, and that can open up a whole True. category of things. Like I mean, just is, think about how much screen time Boba Fett had in Empire Strikes Back. It was almost nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah but let's, let's talk a little bit about Kylo Ren. I mean, Adam Driver, he owned this role. I mean, mm -hmm. this role, yeah. what he, he was great. He killed it. He really was a huge it's, part through, of his success of Throughout this. the trilogy, I loved everything between Rey and Kylo Ren, yes. ben, ben Solo. So that, that was a, and I, one of the strong anchors and, of right. these movies for me. And, and this trilogy, and this movie specifically, I think did them justice, those yeah. two, mm -hmm. it did them justice. And, I, and we won't say any more yeah. about that. Well, but he didn't wonderful. Linger, they didn't linger on, like Rose in, in, the, uh, in movie eight, they lingered on her and, and Finn so much that, and there just wasn't enough between the two of them that I felt was real. Mm -hmm. But in this movie, their relationship felt way more legitimate. In the, mm -hmm. in the few moments that they had, but it, but it wasn't laborious. Like you didn't get like have all this time with them where it wasn't really yeah. nothing was developing. They, they quickly established right. More. That but that's the that's what you know. TV show writing could be a lot more and dragged say, out, but movie writing has to be tight. This movie, I'm not going to say it, this movie does introduce a character that I think they developed very quickly, much to the level of Boba Fett. Um, you, you know what a character yes, I'm yes. talking about. I want to go into any more detail. So they can do that. And I think they very consciously did that. Like I, you know, I, I want to know more about that character and their yes. relationship to, yeah. know, to the other characters that we know. So that you can do it, but you, you know, there's got to be enough of that to make the universe feel real. Right. Right. It, there always has to be hidden depth. Like the, you have to feel like there's layers behind the story that's being told. And they sort of did that in this yeah. movie. Well, well, how but there were some missed it's, opportunities. It's, the idea that what they have a relationship that we don't know much about, but yeah. they allude to it. So now your wheels are spinning. Oh, cool! They they have this thing and that thing. What does that mean? You know, you have. They're trying to read behind the lines right. of all their interactions, and it makes it gives it a depth because right. characters have to have a history. They're not starting at the beginning of the yeah. movie, and they have to have a the world language. has to have a history. Every object in the movie has to have a history. Every ship, everything has to have a right. history. And and you're and you're telling this story in multiple layers all at the same time. And the most the epic movies do that. I think that this movie got most of the way there, but it didn't quite, quite, you know, get, get all the way there. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was um, definitely like the most cinematic, mm -hmm. and and when I say reasonable, there, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of lightsaber fighting in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Not enough in movies four, five, and six. Like ridiculously over the top in movies one, two, and three. Like it was yeah. way too much. Yeah. Like fan, like. You know. But I have to say, my favorite you know, lightsaber fight is the one with Darth Maul at the beginning of the. At the end no, of the that's first not my movie. favorite. My favorite was in the. The, re the, re the re retooling of. Yeah, but I mean in the actual. Yeah, movie. but in the actual right, right. movies, you know, I like the lightsaber fights that that seem like they're trying really hard. Yeah. You know, it can't just be this ridiculous, like, 15 They're not right sparring. Thing. They're fighting. They're fighting, and yeah. you want to see them sweat it out. And I thought that the, the actors and the choreography in, uh, in Movie 9, it really made you feel like they were trying hard, that it was hard, yeah. that it was dangerous. You know, people were getting hurt in this film, which was right. another thing. It's in yeah. typical Star Wars. It's like most of the time people aren't getting hurt. They're, like, completely okay or they die. Right. This movie, uh, people yeah. were getting beat up, and I yeah. like that because it yeah. made it feel real. Right, right, but right. bottom line, though, we love this movie. I had to take a pee the entire movie, and it would not leave my seat because <laughs> I couldn't find a minute to leave. Yeah. And I stayed. We all loved it. I and think it's it, pee worthy. It's pee worthy. <laughs> we, were the, we were the big. We were the big crew. Everybody thoroughly yeah, enjoyed yeah. it. And we went and in skeptical. We, we did. My skeptical. expectations were so low. Mm -hmm. So which may have so low. I but I enjoyed <laughs> it. I enjoyed it. And but that's a, but this the level of this film should have been the yeah. lowest level that um, any Star Wars of film all three yeah. ever Ag agreed. should be. So so now that they learn their lesson apparently, like because we know that Abrams like got an amazing amount of flack for movie seven. I mean he got he got 
boiled online. I mean, people yeah. are still pissed off at him about this. So he did fix the thing, a lot of things. I mean, I was paying very close attention yeah. to all the things I knew that he did. You clearly wrong. paid attention to the I mean, criticism. When you know, if there's things that I want to say right now. That I so well, say. let's <laughs> save it for the deep review. Yeah. So I think. The bottom line is, if you're a Star Wars fan, this was worth seeing. Go see uh, it. You it gotta was, see it. It was surprisingly good. Yeah. Uh, yes, the problems that you think it's going to have, it has. But it didn't. You couldn't fix the problems of 7 and 8. But it did the best job it could, and I think it was a... I felt it was a satisfying end to, Absolutely. This, to the Skywalker saga. And it made me say, hope that, alright, this is now done. Let's move on to some other Star Wars stories that are just completely new and different. Right, we have to celebrate Agreed. the fact that a few things. One, it's over. Mm -hmm. If you didn't like it, fine. If you did like it, well, you got your trilogy. Yeah. But now it's on to bigger and better things. Bigger and and better you know things. what? Just stick with TV. TV's kicking ass. Mandalorian's awesome. Yeah. We'll, we'll review that in depth as well. Yeah. All right. Until next time.